This is the Monocast, all about open source marketing automation with Montic. And here is your host, Hecky Gamble. Yo, my, is what the Bavarians say. <laughs> okay, now we just did some kidding in the pre-show here. Uh, now let's get serious, Leon. Hi there. How are uh, you? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty good. <laughs> Happy to be here once again. Yeah, and hello everybody out there in the world, in the remote ends of Mordic Universe <laughs> and where else. Um, good to have you back. And um, we're going to talk Mordic, of course, today and specifically... We we'll have a fascinating uh, piece of technology by, by our friend Leo Schuler in yeah. Brazil in our interview part. And that will be about connecting Google Tag Manager into Mordic and enabling whole new worlds. Yeah, for universes. Mordic. Oh, well, there you go again. <laughs> from, from Bavaria to universe. <laughs> yeah. Okay, before we go there, we have uh, bits and pieces left and right. Yeah, starting off with the bits and pieces, we have a follow-up from our last episode. We were talking about fighting spam bots, and there's a super like, uh, well-written discussion in the forums it's, it's <laughs> yeah many people contributing and the the entire like universe of how to fight a spam bot is pretty well explained with everybody contributing and if you out there have the same problem i recommend to go and read that uh, forum article yeah i think it's the same thread that we linked to already yeah. but there's uh, plenty of new stuff really deep but also variety of, of approaches to the topic etc so yeah if that's your cake then then take a look um not everybody's cake is <laughs> dealing with millions of contacts within a single modic instance yeah. but if you are, are in that ballpark then there's an interesting thread also in the forums uh, that we'll link to and within that thread there's an old piece of code that surfaced from our friend Heath Dutton hmm. um, basically a bash script uh, that well, is a really good good uh, package for running multiple Mordic jobs in parallel like like there's uh -huh, 10 yeah. jobs who do the the campaign triggering etc no, it's not. yeah uh, yeah it's it's good stuff so yeah take a look if it's for you yeah talking about good stuff um i myself and also us two both yeah seem to realize that n8n which we talked about i think episode 20 or something and even had an interview with uh, tanai pant uh, talking about n8n that it's getting more traction and more people are starting to use it and it's popping up more often in the forums and everywhere it's pretty cool to see yeah if you don't remember it it's that replacement for sapier or integromod yeah. etc but in in open source so there's a self-hosted flavor which makes it um more more data protection friendly maybe cheaper and all and uh, yeah so so wherever you or whoever you talk to many people now say oh, well, by the way i'm using and i don't love it and yeah check it out if you haven't then what else do we have we have a feature wish yeah. um about yeah, pretty well-known thing like like open this email in browser Everybody knows that from the spam that he had. <laughs> um, there's no such thing built in with Mordic. There's mm -hmm. some 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 email clients have it. Some some work, some don't. But a built-in link in Mordic, we don't have that. There's a feature wish for that. Uh, I'm not so sure how relevant and important it is today. It's certainly one of the check or bullet list checklist features. Yeah. Um, so if you think it's important, go go to the forum linked in the show notes and uh, give it an upvote talking about important features i get feature wish on my own this week <laughs> which is kind of rare um, my feature wish this week is that i want to be able to set modic text to a content once you click the link in an email that would be so sweet okay let me try to digest that so when, when there's a link in an email person clicks that link then he or she is tagged 
automatically and the way this is normally done so, so what, what would you use this tag for typically so like, so like double opt-in things or yeah unsubscribing double opt-in okay. um the thing is that i want to use it for in this case i got a certain use case for it is if somebody doesn't comply to cookies and we want to track if he clicked the link and visits a certain unsubscribe page that we cannot do that if he does not comply to our tracking as <laughs> logically okay, it's is not reliable yeah yeah it's not reliable and um, we are able to track if he clicks a link in an email for example an unsubscribe link yeah. and i want to automatically tag that person that's the use case okay and if he or she clicks the link we will see that in the contact history we could do the filtering yeah. in a campaign mm -hmm. let's see where you're going in the, if, if that is uh, happening more than once then the filtering in the campaign is is also not working so, yeah. yeah correct okay i think i i, I get the point and um, perfect <laughs> and uh, if you also get the point and you think it's a good good one then uh go to the feature request and then vote it up if you don't think it's a good one but you like leon still go there and <laughs> give him a thumb up <laughs> and then we'll it's see how many people like you leon <laughs> it's a oh, win-win situation <laughs> yeah isn't it okay there's an old feature request um about integrating cal.com mm -hmm. which is an open source alternative once again to calendly yeah uh, same um uh, same positive effects like like it's data protection friendly yep. etc uh, and it's it's pretty nice looking so i always thought it's a good thing but but uh, so far it only has like two votes when i talk to people they all say wow that would be great but nobody is seems to care really mm -hmm. um i've one thing to offer and, and that's because i'm interested in it myself um <laughs> if if you out there also think integrating cal.com with Mordic or, or learning more about cal.com in the first place mm -hmm. um, would be a nice thing, then I could just do an interview with, with mm -hmm. the people behind it. Um, and we, A, learn a lot of things and B, maybe push the integration with Mordic a little forward. Yeah. By the way, I don't think it's a Mordic plugin necessarily. It's rather uh, an extension to, to cal.com. Or it's just a webhook, alternatively. Either way, um, it would be great to have that, to have this uh, scheduled booking on the one end and, sure. and turning that into a modic contact on, in the, on the other end. Talking about good things, <laughs> <There's> also <laughs> this <laughs> open source day started by John Lillard, and um, I heard you know a bit more about that, and you can explain to us what the open source day is yeah, all about well maybe i gotta step back a little bit and, and <laughs> talk about john's role um <laughs> who is with acquia and and is now the person who has a, who is giving the most time to work for the modic community yeah the same role that that alan briefly had last year before we, mm -hmm. before he left yeah. uh, and and Jan, john of course is one of the, of the original modic people and he knows his stuff well and uh, <laughs> also very enthusiastic and so one of the first things he said was um, this this backlog of of code that we have um is killing us so we, there's a lot of code out there that is fixing bugs in modic that is bringing new features to modic but it's just not in the core product because yeah. it needs the quality assurance and maybe some some coaching or whatever um, so this thing that we call pr testing and merging etc all those buzzwords <laughs> but it's all about bringing existing codes contributed by people out there into the modic, modic product yeah. and uh, not being able to do that uh, slows down modic and gives frustration to the oh, people yeah. um so it's it's absolutely crucial that we get way way better there and get rid of the backlog of those things and that's what what john said too let's wow let's handle that and um he, so with all his enthusiasm the next day he came back and said oh my god i cannot <laughs> handle that it's way too much for me yeah. uh, we need to find ways and so there was a call with with some of the major motor companies um and we said 
okay, we we will all chip in, we will all contribute developer power and also other people, um, and try to organize ways to uh, get much more pace there. Yeah. And the idea was to have uh, a every Friday to have like like a little sprint where everybody who has time available can hook up, do, do like like three calls in the day and, and yeah. uh, coordinate themselves and get stuff done Perfect. and yeah yeah and um of course that's uh open to everyone everybody is is very much invited to join in not necessarily developers we also need people who can do functional testing or uh help out in other ways but um in the end of course we want to merge as much things as we can <laughs> yeah. so, so once again to get stuff into Mordic get stuff get, get bugs out of yeah. Mordic um, so that's the open source Friday and uh, there's a blog post exp explaining all that much better than I can do <laughs> it and uh, take a look at the show notes and find out more yeah Okay, Dan. Good. Um, I already mentioned that we want to talk about Google Tag Manager in our interview today, and and basically about the the connector that Leo Schuler created. Yeah, super um, cool. Let me first explain, for, as a starting point, what this all means. If you're not familiar with Tag Manager. Uh, don't worry, but you are familiar with with Mautic, mm -hmm. and you do know that we can track uh, things in Mordic like a user has visited a page and we can also yeah. filter for that and do a lot of things based on that campaign yeah. uh, actions or uh, segments so filters yeah, so, yeah. Um, so that, that's great but there's other things that we cannot uh, work with like a user has clicked a button or a uh, user has uh, scrolled down a page or things like that. So Mordic just don't, doesn't know about that. But there are other things or other tools that do know about it. Most famously, of course, Google Tag Manager yeah. uh, can turn all of these so-called events into uh, signals to other software. So... And the term is triggers, like, mm -hmm. like uh, scrolling down is a trigger, clicking some sort of button is a trigger, downloading <laughs> something. Um, and those triggers can can g uh, go to a connection. This connection is called a tag in the tag manager. And so what, what Leo did, he, he created a tag that hooks into Mordic yep. and basically uh, pumps information into Mordic and, and simulates page Hits. So now if there's a certain event, a certain thing happening in in, uh, in the website, yep. uh, Google Tag Manager can detect that and create a fake page visit, so to say, in Mordic, which we can then work with. Super it, handy. Yeah, it can, can do more. It can, can also create Mordic tags automatically without this mpixel that we normally have. Mm -hmm. uh, it can even populate custom fields. So, it, for instance, it could say, okay, my preferred language is now this or other preferences or, or even values can be populated directly from this uh, Mordic uh, quatsch, from from uh, quatsch, uh, um, from from this um, the tech things, manager, yeah, tech. the things that happen on the website, which are called events, which are then uh, turned into action by the tag manager. Yeah. So, <laughs> long story short, a uh, lot of magic, and let's uh, talk Leo about it uh, a little bit more. And there we go. Welcome to this interview, another Mordecai's interview to the other end of the world, from <laughs> from my perspective anyway. And today I'm talking to Leonardo Schuler in uh, Brazil. Hey Leo, how are you doing? Hello, I'm, I'm doing fine. Yeah. Lovely morning here in Brazil. From this side of the world, it's summer. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah. Don't tell me. Uh, in and please you can call me Leo. Oh yeah. And okay. Um yeah, and, uh, forgive me Portuguese is not my thing so whatever words will come up I will pro probably butcher them but um I'll do my best. All right. <laughs> yeah. 
Speaking of Brazil, tell us a little bit about Brazil and uh, maybe also about yourself, who you are, who you are, what you're doing for a living, etc. Uh, okay, yeah, so uh, you know Brazil is you know a beautiful country, and there is a lot of opportunities in in marketing and digital marketing in general. Myself, I am a developer, uh, mm -hmm. always working in IT, but always have a, a special connection and relationship with marketing. My graduation is uh, computer science, and mm -hmm. my wife actually runs a marketing company. That's why I say a, a, a close relationship. And actually, yesterday was our 20 years anniversary of, of dating oh. anniversary. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And at that, at that time, we were working on an IT company. She was a marketing manager, and mm -hmm. I was uh, a business consultant, which is just a fancy way to say that uh, assistant analyst and, and, the, and programmer. Yeah. At that time, I was invited to work as well in the pre-sales area where I met my wife. You know, a few years later, she has her own marketing company and I'm continuing working in IT, helping her whatever is necessary, but also my own thing. So definitely, you know, so Agencia is the marketing agency. Uh, mm -hmm. It's definitely a place that I can be created and play with new technology as well. Yeah, cool. That's, of course, a very lucky coincidence that uh, this in this situation you're tackling it from both ends you with a strong it skills and in your wife from the marketing side and bringing it all together i think it's been one of the very first modcast episodes where we talked to rodrigo uh, dimitrio in in brazil and i'm very happy to have another person from south america on the show um tell us a little bit uh, about how you got started with Mordic. How did you ever find about, find out about it or discover it or got introduced to it? Okay, so, you know, late uh, 2019, the company was already, you know, paying attention with the digital marketing, although it was not the main niche that the, the company had. But mm -hmm. with the pandemic, it definitely the opportunity and the need to enter that specific market. So it's about that time in early 2020 that uh, being participating in some education, some mentoring program, I was introduced to Mautic. So mm -hmm. the, uh, there was this guy that really helped me uh, call it an Antonio. Uh, I'll, I'll share with you his Instagram. So he's yeah. also a marketing automation uh, leader and he introduced Mautic for, for our company. We actually attend his mentoring classes, which really, mm -hmm. you know, paid off. We already have some big clients using Mautic, which were previously using RD Station, which is the marketing tool that have most market share here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Um, and the reason that, that you and I got in touch was this video that you posted on the Mordic forum, which was really narrow focus and there was about tracking things and specifically with Google Analytics and Tag Manager. So very focused, but also very, very deep and very creative. And of course, this is a, an audio podcast, but maybe you can tell us in words what your idea was, how it, it came to this implementation that you showed in the video, and what it is doing in the first place. First, thank you for, for compliment uh, the solution that I, that I was able to develop. So, you know, basically, this is a need that I, I could see is not, not only mine, but a lot of people feel the necessity to track the user behavior in their websites, not... Mm -hmm. Uh, not only for the page view perspective, right? So other actions that the user take. So the first thing that I did when I wanted to know how, how do I do such kind of tracking, especially with Mautic, I go to you know, the forum, the community forum, search for it. So I did find 
more people, you know, needing that. So how do I track the user behavior with, with Mate? Which is a good thing. I didn't find the solution, but I did found, you know, people asking about it. And sometimes this is enough for, for us to, to, to keep going, to keep yeah. helping Can each other. Can I interrupt other. you there? Can I interrupt you there for, for a second? Because maybe not everybody is fully aware of, of what we are both talking about. When you say tracking the user, we all know that Mautic can do that itself and it can have the user history and we can put them into segments, etc. on that basis. So from that starting point, what is missing for you and, and uh, what, what is the approach? Um. All right. So yeah, l like you said, you know, Mautic already track some of the user behaviors. You, you have segments, you, you collect the data from the user. From a website perspective, what you usually do is, you know, tracking the pages that the user visit, a any form submission, right? So you can include forms, the user fill up themselves and send uh, active sender data to, to the Mautic server. Uh, yeah, so basically everything that goes through Mordic, right? Like like email open or asset and, and, and forms and landing page, etc. Right, uh -huh. right. So what what is missing is basically, for example, if a user stay uh, long enough on your web page, for example, or uh, scroll scroll to the end of the page, watch some videos, click in a link that is not actually a link, for example, accordion widget. They expand, mm -hmm. so watch, view specific data from our page. So those kind of details are missed uh, from Mautic. And sometimes it's important for us as a marketing uh, strategy to know what else engages the users, you know, what their specific behaviors. Yeah. So that need actually what led me to to build that solution that track uh, custom events, right? So not just page view. So one event that we have in Mautic is page view. So whenever uh, a user visits the page, you got a page view event on the history of that user. Yeah. Uh, so what I did was I managed to track additional ev events, whatever the name you want, you, you put it, uh, that history in the user. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, the way I did that was using Tag Manager. So it's not just a Mautic solution, but it's actually a combination of tools, which I have a video where I'm playing with details about, you know, how can you implement and other approaches that you can take. I know because people tend to use Mautic, right? This is a podcast about Mautic. So chances are, you know, people that are listening to this podcast are already proficient with Mautic or trying to be proficient. So there is mm -hmm. a tendency of, you know, trying to use Mautic for every need that you want. But sometimes you have to use other tools, uh, you know, to get the most of, uh, of what you actually need, you know. Not yeah, true, true. Uh, yeah, so in this video, I explain a little bit about that relationship with tools, Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager, which is a tool that I have a lot of fun with, you know, d during developing this solution. And, uh, yeah, so the combination of those tools and how to, you can then send to Mautic those specific events. Okay, so, so Tag Manager or the Google Tag Manager is pretty much at the core of the solution, right? Exactly. Uh, and um, I have to say, I, I, I did not play around with it myself, but I, I see a ton of need for, for it for my own company and, and our, our clients, obviously, um, to use it. So what, what would I do to implement that? Can I find it in the Google Catalog already? Uh, yes, yeah, so Tag Manager... It is free to use, and basically what it does, you know, if you're familiar with Mautic, you already know that every uh, every asset that you create, uh, you have to integrate with your website, right? So, mm -hmm. for example, if you have a form, if you have a focus, you extract that snippet code and put it in your website. Uh, mm -hmm. Similar thing with other tools, right? If you have a Facebook pixel, tracking pixel, you have that snippet code that you have to place it in your page. And other libraries 
Podgr, for example, you have your own snippet code. So if you're working with those tools long enough, you realize that, you know, there is a lot of code to, to manage in several pages. So mm -hmm. Google Tag Manager comes to relieve that pain point, right? So instead of... Okay, so, so, so you, you're describing Tag Manager in general now. And I would assume that most people who are listening to this and, and are factually interested have a rough picture of what Tag Manager is or pro are probably already using it. My question was more about the Mautic integration, the Mautic tag. Um, how would I get that into Tag Manager if I already have the GTM? Okay, yeah, yeah. so it's specific for this solution. Uh, I have built a tag template. I have a lot of fun building that. I am already thinking about the, the next tag template projects that I'll be doing. So we will share the link to this tag template and with instructions how you can import your this template to your tag management system. So once mm -hmm. you download, import into your tag management account, you'll be able to include in the pages would you like that should be pretty straightforward, although the video that I have created explain how you can configure. With that tag, you basically can update any tag. You can send any event name that you want, although will be record mm -hmm. as a page view. You can rename it the way you want. You can provide any URL, either real or fake URL. Mm -hmm. In that event, you can update any public field that you have mm -hmm. in your content record and any tag as you want. So those are the out-of-the-box updates that you can do with that tag. Okay, so w when I have this in place, I, I could configure it uh, accordingly and then I could, for instance, say, please show me in the contact history in Mordic whenever that user clicked on a tab or on, on, on a phone number on the website or uh, did some sort of download without that having to be a Mautic asset, etc. So real, real powerful enrich enrichment of the Mautic contact history, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and Tag Manager has a lot of tracking that you could send it to Mautic. So for example, watching a video for the first yeah. one minute, scroll the entire mm. page, there's yeah, a lot of flexibility one, yeah. that you can track with that with that yeah. tag. Yeah. Uh, I'm wondering. Uh, I have a lot of ideas in my mind, and <laughs> I think it's it's going to be fun playing around with that and and solving a lot of things that we just did not have the means to solve so far. Um, so people can look at the video. And um, I'll put the link in the show notes, like always. You also, you also said uh, where there's a link to, to get the Tag Manager template. Um, is there any chance that it's going to be in the official template catalog in, in, in Tag Manager? Uh, yeah, I sure hope so. Day? I have submitted to the template gallery. Uh, they don't provide feedback on when they will be available. But, you know, hopefully the, uh, the tag template will be available in the gallery. So you don't need to manually import into your account. Mm. You can just search in the gallery and the tag. Fantastic. Will. Yeah. Cool. Wow. Very good. R excellent stuff. For everybody who does not really know what we're talking about here, <laughs> let me just assure you that, that it's, it's a major, major enhancement for Mordic. And, um, It's, it's really newsworthy and it's really something you should play around with or have someone play around with it because it gives you a whole new category of, of options for your marketing. Yeah, so, wow, I'm, I'm grateful you did that. Is there any other projects like, like, you, like this that you're working on? Oh, thank you, first. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Like, like I mentioned, I, I'm already playing with some other uh, solutions. I guess the, the one that almost ready is a solution for consent management. So mm -hmm. uh, there will be some free stuff on Tag Manager, but uh, part of it will be paid. So the 
concept manager is part of a LGPD or GDPR solution, which, mm -hmm. you know, covers a lot of things. Uh, the technology is just one side of it. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. So I'm working also with the legal team. I'm implementing that solution with a couple of companies already. And I'll be wow. releasing a license to use the, the tool and implement it as well with Tag Manager. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I'm that I'm thinking, this is still on babe steps yet, but the form submission with Mautic, uh, you know, Mautic has our already great solution for that. But one thing that I that I feel the need and I I know a lot of, of other people also think is worth it is when you already have a form or like your designer already built their own form outside Mautic or you use a beautiful template and you want to use that form that was built outside Mautic to submit mm -hmm. to Mautic. So I'm working on a, a tag that will tie that form that was built outside, outside Mautic to the Mautic form. I know there is already solutions for WordPress to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I'm working on things that are outside uh, those those frameworks, more like a, mm -hmm. HTML only solution. Uh -huh. Really interesting. Some things sound like crazy ideas, but if that works. Like like hooking a form through Tag Manager. Fantastic to see this technical. Op options enhancing that's that's really cool you know luckily in a few days up, i already have uh, some solutions for to show it to you and you know maybe in another huh. podcast I, i can talk about about that <laughs> excellent cool now um all these things we will find i mean if if you are kind enough to contribute more things we will always find that at the forum or is there any other place where we could look at or people could look at Oh, you know, specific for Mautic, uh, I would say forum uh, is the, the first place to, to go. Uh, I'll, I'll share my LinkedIn as well. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. and the Swagency, uh, the marketing company. So if you okay. are interested with additional things, you know, or maybe some specific Absolutely. words, we can all switch. Okay, so we have that in show note too. And I want to thank you for your contribution, for, for, for doing this deep work and contributing it, and for explaining it to me and to, for, to everybody else. Thank you so much, Leo. Thank you. Um, stay safe. I hope we meet again soon. And uh, for now, yeah, take care. Thank you. For, I'm glad. You know, it was just nice to talk to you. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye. Wow, that's a pretty in-depth like view about how to use the tag manager i was thinking about if I, we could maybe use it to even you know replace mordic's tag mechanisms but maybe enhance them and use it a bit more flexible than mordic lets us do at the moment mm -hmm. i would say you're my part. okay um yeah it, it is really really powerful and i'm still flashed uh, but one thing's for sure that wherever it comes to reliable mechanisms like you had in your mm -hmm. um, feature request earlier in this episode yeah. uh, and or or, or mechanism me mechanical parts double opt-in etc then we cannot rely on anything consent manager driven and javascript driven etc we need internal True. things that's still required but but for everything behavioral observations tracking etc that's fantastic stuff uh, yeah, i just perfect. love it love it okay what else um we did talk about airmeet in the last episode uh the fact that we're using it for more conference going forward but that we also want to use it in meetups german meetup for example exactly <laughs> so we as announced we did try it out for the german meetup how did you like it leon it was okay it was a bit clunky to get into but as soon as you understand how it works with yeah sitting on a virtual table <laughs> you will see out there <laughs> yeah. um then it's pretty good i yeah, could say yeah uh, yeah we had, we had our learnings we, we were learnings yeah. and i think the next meetup will be much much smoother yeah and of course that's well, that was the plan from the beginning to to try things out and and reduce it to that 
the, those things that are necessary and that are convenient yeah. and, so, and so on. And that, of course, turns into best practices for other local communities as well. Yeah. And we're in the process of doing just that. So if you are out there and you want to use it for your own Baltic community, then give me a ping and we're very happy to get you on board. Perfect. Yeah, we're also getting on board. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, a lot of new people in the Mordic Conference organizing team. Yeah, you uh, who we we did do this little reach out and mm -hmm. then ask people to help us and to to distribute the the work and the the, the various roles that we have among multiple shoulders, yep. and that worked tremendously well. We're very happy that we have way beyond ten people now in the team. Yes especially now for the online conference coming up in June. Yeah. Um, uh, but that's a really good model and a really good sign for for every niche of Mordic, I would say. Yeah. I can only say that yeah, I've personally will be contributing to the design team, yeah, yeah. as you know already, but the listener <laughs> out there not yet. Yeah. And um, getting into these meetings and seeing all this work distributed between more shoulders than yours and roofs mm. seems to yeah make things a lot easier and more reliable and not yeah the closer it comes the more you and roof have to do because like everything piles up yeah it's not like like we we did everything in yeah, the last years but of course the bulk was ruth and, and uh, another part was me yeah and yeah so that's uh, much more sustainable this way and i also have a feeling that this uh, interaction between people from all ends of the world is, is a really good thing because many have not done that before yeah and then uh, let's not forget that the call for papers is going to close in like two weeks from now on february yeah. 28th around about two weeks yeah yeah um so if you have any any idea for talking about things, be it in English or in your mother tongue, um, please do not hesitate, but, but submit <laughs> a talk now. Yeah, you please. only need the, the outlines. You don't need a lot now, but you should make up your mind what the topic is and then submit it now, not sit on it and wait and then forget about it which is <laughs> fairly <laughs> natural but uh, the, the sooner you have you have it in the box the the better it is been there done that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah so i think we too have it in the box now yeah we do thank you very much for listening everybody if you have any opinion on uh, cal.com please remember to give me a ping or, or any sort of uh, signal on the channel of your choice so send me a fax or <laughs> no don't um, and I'm happy to hear from from all of you anyway yeah same same fine same. so okay. if, if you're thank out you there so much. Now, have still feedback yeah. last reminder about some topics you want to have discussed in the modicast or just general feedback feel free to give it uh, in the channel you desire, be it Instagram, Facebook, or yeah. Facts, I could just suppose that. So please give us feedback. Yeah. 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 Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Won't get any better. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.